Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. My name is Samantha. Today's video, let's get some late fall crops in the ground. These crops are gonna be versatile enough that I will be able to naturally feed the chickens, the quail, the rabbits, and the baby goat some through the winter. So this will help with a vitamin intake for them, cut down on my feed cost. It's gonna make things a whole lot easier here on the farmstead. Now, where I'm gonna be planting today is not in the quarter acre no-till. Going to be planting in this raised bed that's been over here, shoved against this fence since before Stephen and I actually bought this property. So the soil is super good because ever since we've been living here for the past four years, I've been dumping rabbit manure, chicken manure, my own worm castings, my own soil amendments, newspaper, and then letting different things grow through the seasons and cleaning it out. Actually, right now, it's got asparagus growing in it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some kale, we're gonna get some cabbage, we're gonna get some beets into the soil. I already preceded those, so these are transplants. The next thing I'm gonna do is take the last little bit of garlic that I have, and I'm going to plant that around my plants. Now I'm gonna do this as a natural pest deterrent against cabbage worms and some other things, but also just so that I have a bed with vers versatility and different foods very close to my home. And it's not out in that quarter acre where we're fixing to be doing the cover crops because I, I don't want that issue dealing with our, you know, cover crops and you got a quarter acre covered in cover crops and you got plants in there too. You may accidentally terminate your plants along with your cover crops. So I don't want to do that. So that's where this raised bed's gonna come in. It's gonna be like a little home garden right off my back porch. And then as winter sets in, what I can do is, because this fence is getting old, I'm gonna use Bisqueen to get across the back. I'm gonna staple it into the wood. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And then I'm gonna TP it out and staple it to the wood that runs along the front of the bed. And I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm gonna make an angled TP across the top. So let's go get all the plants. Let's get some more stuff and get this bed filled in with some more rabbit manure. We have a lot of things to do today. I just got through weeding part of it. And you and I are gonna get my late fall garden into the ground together today here at Starkey Farmstead and Papa Sammy and Alley Bud. In this bed, you're gonna see, we have some pretty large pieces of charcoal and charred wood. That's okay, over time that will break down. Not concerned about it. What else we have in here is a lot of decomposing hay. All right, there's a reason for that. It's a great weed blocker, guys. Great weed blocker. There is no, underneath all of this, there's no plastic, no any of that. All right, so the weeds can easily grow up from underneath the wood you're looking at right now. We also have wood chips that come out of our nursing does boxes. We have rabbit manure. We have hay covered in rabbit urine. We have compost. We have worm castings. We do have some breakthrough down here of weeds. I'm okay with that. There's the asparagus. As you can see, you can just see as it goes up. Now, I did let the chickens in here the other day. Did an amazing job right here. Pulling out weeds. Added a little bit of poop and stuff a second ago but they basically went down to the bottom of the bed and moved all the hay and stuff for me mixed it all up but I want to show you how beautiful this is okay so this bed started on hard packed clay still has a lot of clay in it but this soil is soft look at that earthworm you see that beautiful full of worms Another reason why I myself do not put a barrier between the ground, there goes another one, between the ground, look at that right there, see that earthworm moving? Okay, so earthworms will make tunnels through here, which will help the water go through. It will aerate the soil because guys, all living things need two components to even begin life, all right? So they need oxygen. Everything needs oxygen. They also need water. Okay, water is actually more important than food. So when you see earthworms in your beds or red wigglers in your beds, guys, that is an amazing thing. That is what you want. When you see that, what you've got is good soil microbiology 
and it will get better every single year. So I've got a little bit more manure and hay. We'll tell you guys, we get our hay from a local supplier, not from a big box store. It is $8 a square, which is really good. And on top of that, I'm helping out a, a local farmer, but he doesn't use any kind of pesticides or fungicides in his field. So he and I can have that conversation. You see what I'm saying? Like know your farmer. If you're buying livestock, you're buying plants, you, you better know the people and where those things are coming from, okay? So we got that little bit covered up. Now let's get these plants into the soil. So what do we have here? All right, we have endive, we have cabbage, we have kale, we have swiss chard, and we have some white beets. We also, move your big tail, have some garlic. So let's get all these tiny transplants into that raised bed and see how it looks. Now, one of the things that I really want to press home to you right now is you can build your soil microbiology and the health of your soil year round. Yes, we're in December of 2022. The weather is going to start changing, but guys, now, right now is the time for you to find somebody that makes compost, that makes worm castings, has rabbit manure or goat manure, or even aged cow manure and horse manure, and work it out with that farmer to take that stuff to your raised beds and where you're gonna garden on top of the soil next year. Now is the time to do that. And the reason I'm telling you that is it takes time, time to build soil microbiology. So say that right now is not the time that you actually want to plant a garden wherever you're located. But you know that come spring, you're gonna make that step. You're gonna be able to take control of your food. You're gonna secure a food access point for you and your family. Well, now is the time to prepare for that. And what I mean is you really seriously need to get your worm castings, your mulch, your compost, your rabbit manure, whatever manure source you're gonna need, and you need to get that into your raised bed or on the plot that you're going to be forming next year, right now. And give it through the winter months for that stuff to begin breaking down, okay? Softening the soil, because even though it might be the dead of winter and you think everything under the snow or the ice or the dead leaves is not moving around, you're incorrect. They may have slowed down, but what's going underneath in the soil is amazing. And what you've got are worms coming up from the depths of the soils to eat the debris that you leave on top. So you're actually encouraging worm activity all the way through winter, okay? So when spring comes, what you're gonna see is that whatever you put into the soil it's gonna grow so much faster. It's gonna be so much more nutrient dense and you're gonna have less of a pest problem because you began to amend your soil in the fall and winter. So that is a free tip for you guys. It's something that Papa Sammy does all the time. Even in the dead of winter, he's bringing out things like compost and coffee grounds and covering things back up with leaves, newspaper and cardboard in all of his raised beds. Not only is he creating soil, he's creating a soil microbiology that cannot be beaten. So as soon as spring comes, he goes out there and pops in his transplants and they grow tremendously. And people are like, how can you do that? Well, he's been amending that soil for the full 12 months. He doesn't run out and neither do I. And buy bags of black cow and compost from a big box store, throw it into a raised bed in the spring, throw some plants and then you realize, wait a minute, there's not enough nutrients. My plants are struggling. I'm, I'm getting pest attacks. That's because you have no soil microbiology. You dumped a bunch of stuff that was already dead because they heat those bags. Everything in those bags have been sterilized. So you're killing the good with the bad. Don't you like that dirty? That would be um, rabbit manure and rabbit urine. It stinks. But anyway, let's get back to this. Guys, look, you need to begin to prepare now. That's the biggest mistake I see with new gardeners, new farmers. People are like, oh, I'm gonna homestead. 
and then it's time to homestead and it's time to make some money off of your animals. It's Easter and springtime and people are wanting young animals to start their flocks and you didn't hatch any out in the winter and you lose those sales. So you really have to start thinking through the process. What do you want for the spring? Well, we're in the fall. We're almost in winter. So let's get serious about the spring now. Order your seeds. Find somebody that sells worm castings, compost, get some mulch, get all that stuff in your beds, get them built now before the heat and before the rush of other people buying and the prices go up, supply and demand. Begin looking for containers that you can use for next spring to garden in now. Get your holes punched in the bottom. Get your rabbit manure, your aged horse manure, your goat manure, the bedding from your chicken coops. Get that into those containers and let it begin to rot. Let the microbiology begin to work in the way that it's supposed to. So we need to prepare. So let's get these plants in the ground so I can prepare to have food to feed part of my flocks and my herds through the winter, thus reducing the cost of running our homestead. Scales on this end, you can pick these little tags up, 10 for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Right here, I didn't put anything beside the asparagus. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is a deep watering system. It is also full of tiny holes drilled into, I'm turning it upside down, right there. Goes all the way through that pipe, allows worms to come in and out. I compost directly in that pipe and deep water through it. So does Papa Sammy. So here we have the organic cabbage. Then we have the endive. Then the Swiss chard all the way down to here. Now I've got a couple of tomato plants that for whatever reason decided to sprout months after being in their little pots. So I'm gonna go ahead Get those three tomato plants into this raised bed along with the garlic and when the temperatures drop really bad i'm going to cover it with the plastic like we talked about in the beginning of the film creating a hothouse effect so the soil is a raised bed so it should not get quite as cold as if i just had it on in a pot you see what i'm saying like this should be able to contain the heat now there's a lot of mulch on this bed that too is going to help as the temperatures drop. A lot of pill, the little pill bugs, roly polies. Saw a lot of beetles. Super excited about the amount of red wigglers and earthworms that you obviously saw too in this bed. So I've got a lot of life in this bed. That is what we are looking for. Signs of life. Now we got all that going on. It has been fertilized for years. It's good and damp from the last rain we got here in Southeast Louisiana. So all I've got to do now, get this garlic into the ground, go ahead and get those tomato plants planted and then water it and leave it be. Just leave it be until I know that that first hard freeze is coming. And then I will get that bisqueen up. So if you guys haven't done so yet, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please know that if you are looking for premium organic worm castings, Pawpaw Sammy and Starkey Farmstead. We make those on site. We do tours here at Starkey Farmstead. You are welcome to come out, give me a call. We are Louisiana Agro Tourism certified, and we will help you guys learn how to garden, reusing, upcycling, recycling, making your own soil amendments and pest deterrents. I highly advise you to look through all the playlists on Pawpaw Sammy's YouTube channel and Starkey Farmstead's YouTube channel. Guys, we actually do this for a living. So we're quick about it, no mess involved. We're debt free, both Papa Sammy and Starkey Farmstead. And it is our goal to help you stay that way while you learn to feed you and your family and your livestock. So you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna get this garlic in the ground, get those tomatoes in the ground, and I'm going inside to clean up because believe it or not, it's December and it is hot in Southeast Louisiana. So you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for rowing in our boats. Here's a free tip on garlic. If you've got good soil, whether it's your raised bed or your ground, you can just dig a little hole with your finger, guys. Pick it up. You, do you see this? Top, the flat end, bottom. Set it into the soil like that. 
cover it back up. You see all that good rabbit manure? Here's another tip for you. Rabbit manure can be directly planted into. It will not burn your plants. Now, another thing you might not know, and if you're intending to sell your fruits and vegetables as you grow them, you have to put your manure so many weeks and months before that plant produces fruits and vegetables or you can't by USDA standards. Look into that, that's all I'm gonna tell you. You need to get your beds prepped now for spring and summer planting if you intend to use manures, okay? I'm telling you that because food and safety laws say that it can't come in direct contact with any type of manure, all right? So having said that, guys, Give us a call here at Storky Farmstead or Pawpaw Sammy's and let us help you get your rabbit manure and other stuff ready for planting in the spring.